Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about the MCQs on the thorax. So when you will have the thorax, the first chapter is about the introduction. So let's see which MCQs can be there. So this is the first question from your chapter. Now the question is the costal margins on each side of the thoracic wall formed by the costal cartilages of which ribs. That means when you will have the anterior chest wall, on the anterior chest wall, lower border is showing these costal margins. So these costal margins are made up of which ribs? So 5 to 7, no. 6 to 9, no. 7 to 10, yes. Now 8 to 12, it is basically not possible because your last two ribs are floating ribs. So answer is, it is these ribs are 7 to 10 which are forming your costal margins. Clear? Now the next question is, the jugular or suprasternal notch lies opposite which vertebral level? Now dear students, when you will have the suprasternal notch, this notch is actually the area above the manubrium. Now this is your manubrium and this manubrium continued lower part with the sternum. Now this is known as suprasternal notch or jugular notch. Now this notch lies at the level of T2, lower border of T2. Now if you will see this, actually if you will see the logic, now this is your T4 lower border, T5 upper border, <coughs> where you will have this junction. Now the thickness of this is corresponding to around two vertebrae. So this is T4, this is T3. Now this is here your lower border of this T2 where you will have the suprasternal notch. Now we will move to the next question. During the clinical examination on the external angle is palpated the corresponding to which vertebral level. So this external angle lies at which level. Now here you will have the lower border of T2, no. Lower border of T3, no. Lower border of T4 and lower border of T6, it is not possible. Answer is C. Because I just told you when you will have the sternum, when you will take the sternum, this is manubrium, this is the sternum. Now this is known as sternal angle. And if you will see this posteriorly, it is at the level of lower border of T4 and upper border of T5. That means the intervertebral disc of T4, T5. So answer is C. Now we'll move to the next question. The plane passing through the external angle is associated with all the following anatomical events except. Now, when you will have this question, you have to keep this thing in mind that there are four points are given. Now, what these four options? The A is saying that this angle of Lewis plane separates the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum. Yes, this is the classical plane which is passes uh, from the external angle. The ascending aorta end and the arch of aorta begins at the level. Yes, when you will have this ascending aorta, this ascending aorta comes from the your uh, heart. It ends at this level. Then the arch will start and arch will end at the same level. Then the pulmonary trunk divides at the level. Yes, pulmonary trunk also divides at this level. So it lies at the level of lower border of T5. Now see, this is the wrong statement. So. All the following are seen. Yes, this is seen, this is seen, this is seen. But this is the wrong statement. So what is the answer of this question? D. All of the three are correct. The D is wrong statement. Now we'll move to the next question. A chest tube is planned to insert in the fifth intercostal space. Which landmark is first identified to count the ribs? Now we are talking about the rib counting. Now, rib counting always start with the external angle where you will have the attachment of second costal cartilage. So, where you are going to start? You are going to start from the external angle which is a clinical importance of this area. Now, the next question is, a patient has venous congestion and swelling of the upper limb due to thoracic outlet compression. Now, <coughs> dear students, there is a two terminologies basically thoracic inlet and thoracic outlet but the thoracic outlet anatomically is actually covered by the diaphragm now when you will have this word thoracic outlet compression we are actually using this word for the clinician now
Now, when you will go clinical in the clinics, you will find that clinically this inlet is also con considered as a outlet. Clear? So there should not be confusion that we are talking about outlet. That means we are not talking about this area. This area anatomically known as thoracic inlet, but clinically it is also known as thoracic outlet. So <coughs> when you will have swelling in the upper limb and venous congestion, this is actually uh, uh, indicating about the compression of the structure lies on the superior surface of your first rib. So what are they? Axillary vein, no. Subclavian vein, yes. Because whenever there is a venous compression, the uh, venous congestion is there because the drainage of the upper limb is hampered by the compression of this subclavian vein. Clear? So this is the answer is B. Now what is the next question? The superior sulcus tumor of the lung causes Horner syndrome. Now see, this is the important thing that whenever we are talking about the Horner syndrome, it is caused by the involvement of sympathetic system. So which structure is involved? So if you have the idea that Horner syndrome occurs because of the sympathetic involvement, you directly take the answer, it is sympathetic chain. But why we are concerning with the tumor of lung? Because the apical part of the lung tumor posteriorly compresses the sympathetic chain which are in the direct relation. Now we will move to the next question. A patient has pain radiating along the alar border of the upper limb. X-ray shows the extra rib above the first rib. Now, when you will have the cervical reason, you don't have the ribs. Ribs start from the thoracic reason. But sometimes from the C7, you will have a presence of abnormal part of the rib. And that is known as cervical rib. Now that is the extra rib above the normal rib. Now that rib sometimes compresses the structure on the superior surface of your first rib. And these are the your subclavian artery generally and lower trunk of brachial plexus. Now here it is a ulnar border. Now this ulnar border or the medial border of the upper limb is supplied by the C8 and T1. So which structure is compressed? Answer is lower trunk of the brachial plexus. Now we'll move to the next question. A young patient with coarctation of aorta shows rib notching on the chest x-ray. This radiological feature is primarily due to engorgement of which vessels. Now for that you should have an idea what is coarctation of aorta. Now this is your aorta. Now there is a coarctation. Coarctation means narrowing. Now see there is a narrowing of the aorta. Now there are posterior intercostal arteries which are arises from this descending part of thoracic aorta. Now what will happen here? There is an important thing is that this is your aorta. Now this aorta will give the branch. That is your, there are three branches, you know, brachiocephalic, common carotid on left side and left subclavian. Now this, these subclavian arteries, and these all other will give the branch. Now this is suppose this is another branch coming from the subclavian is known as internal thoracic. Now it is giving the anterior intercostal artery. Now how this blood will go? Now the <coughs> this area is already blocked. So the blood will come out from here, here and it will go like this. Clear? So the blood is now going from anterior intercostal arteries to the posterior intercostal arteries. And then it is going into the descending aorta to supply the blood into the lower part of the body. So what will happen in the coarctation of aorta? These posterior intercostal arteries enlarge abnormally. And they are going to create the notching into the developing ribs. And that's why this is known as the, this is known as rib notching, which is a classical feature of coarctation of aorta. So, which vessels are affected? Posterior intercostal artery, their enlargement causes the notching into the ribs. Now, what is the next question? Which of the following structure does not pass through the thoracic inlet? So, <coughs> trachea, but obviously it enters, esophagus enters, apex of the lungs are present here on both the side. Right subclavian. Now, see, whenever you are having the uh, arch, now from the arch, there are three major arteries, brachiocephalic, 
left common carotid and left subclavian. This brachiocephalic later on divide into the right common carotid and right subclavian. Now, this is our inlet. So, this brachiocephalic is there on the right side and right subclavian arises later on. So, which structure does not pass? So, answer is your D. Now, this right subclavian artery does not pass through the thoracic inlet. Clear? Remaining three, these three structures are passes through the inlet. So, answer is D. Now, I will move to the next question. Which diaphragmatic opening is present at the level of T12 and is not affected by the contraction of diaphragm? Now, when you will have this diaphragm, now this diaphragm is having the three different major opening. One is T8, then T10 and T12. Now, this opening is known as vena caval opening. This is esophageal opening. This is aortic opening. Now, this aortic opening basically a misnomer. It is basically a hiatus. It is a gap. And this gap is present between the uh, your fibers of aorta and the posteriorly present your vertebral column. So, there is a median arcuate uh, ligament of the diaphragm which is clearly separating these space. So, whatever the contraction is there, it is not going to affect. Why? Because this is not basically opening. This is basically a gap behind this diaphragm. So, the muscle contraction is not going to affect this. So, answer is aortic hiatus. It is not at all affected by the contraction because it is not a opening. Basically, it is a hiatus. Now, we will move to the next question. Ribs are most vulnerable to the fracture at which point? Now, why the, we are talking about the ribs? Because here you have to understand the bones in the body which are having curvature like clavicle, like ribs. So, whenever any bone which is showing an angulation are always at higher risk of the fracture. So, always the angle portion of a rib is the most common side. That's why when you will have the clavicle, clavicle also show the fracture at this angle where you will have the junction of one third and two third curvature of the clavicle. In the same way, this angle of the rib is also most vulnerable point where it is having the high chances of fracture. Now, you will have the next question. All of the following statement about the suprapleural membrane is true except. Now, what is suprapleural membrane? Now, when you will do the dissection here, when you will remove the skin and your superficial fascia, you will find a layer. Now, that layer is made up of not only the muscle, but also from the fascia. So, it is known as membranofacial covering. It is not purely a muscular layer. It is not purely a facial layer. It is formed by the muscle and fascia. So, some book says it is a membranofacial. Some book says it is a musculofacial. Some book says it is aponeurotic plus facial. That means always there are two components. So, it is partially separate the thorax from the neck. Yes. Its apex attached to the transverse process of C7, yes, it, it is formed only. Now, see, this is the wrong word. It is not only formed by the endothoracic fascia. It is, it is contributed by the uh, your scalenius minimus muscle. Clear? And it provides rigidity to the thoracic inlet during respiration, yes, so that your apex will not pop up. So, this is the C is the wrong answer. Why wrong? Because the word only is used. The endothoracic fascia is also a contributor along with the muscular part. And what is that? Scalenius minimus. So, it is made up of two components, muscle plus fascia. Clear? So, this C is wrong. Now, which of the following ribs are called as true ribs? True ribs means posteriorly they are connected to the vertebral column and anteriorly sternum. Now, when you will see all the 12 ribs, Posteriorly, all the 12 are connected to the vertebral column. But when you will see the upper 7 ribs, 1 to 7, they are anteriorly direct have connection with the sternum. After the 7, the ribs are connected with the uh, succeeding costal cartilage, clear? Not with the sternum. So, these 1 to 7 are known as true ribs, which are considered as a vertebrosternal ribs, clear? So, this is all about the 
MCQs which uh, may be asked from the, your first chapter of BD Chaurasia or your Vishram Singh or whatever book you are reading. The general questions may be asked from the thoracic area. So this is all about the session. I hope you like these questions. Thank you and bye-bye.